Hi, Jenny. Hi, Lori. All right, here we are. Uh, we are doing our astro lore on the Libra new moon that is happening on March 28th at 2, what did you say, 2.40 p.m.? At 2.48, close enough. 48 p.m. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. So we first we want to think about the cycles. When we're looking at a full moon, it is part of the cycle that began at the new moon, which happened two weeks ago on March 13th. That was the beginning of a cycle. That new moon grew a little bit every night until it comes to the full illumination of this full moon that we're talking about today. Now, we think of it in terms of planting a seed at the new moon. A week later, we come to the first quarter moon where the idea is that's a time that you take action on what began at the new moon. And then at the full moon, you see clearly what occurred. That's the shorter cycle. That's the little cycle. The larger cycle, we want to go back to the Libra new moon that happened approximately six months ago. Mm -hmm. When was that? It was October 16th. October 16th. So that was the new, the Libra new moon, October 16th. Mm -hmm. So really on the longer cycle, you think about what began back then, and now you are able to see what's occurred since then and where we stand. You know, I, I think of the new, the full moon as the illumination. And with that illumination, you see what adjustments need to be made mm -hmm. along that path. What do you have to add to that before we open up the chart, Jenny? Uh, that the, the new moon to the full moon, so the first half of the cycle where the lights it starts out dark and it's growing and growing and growing, that half of the cycle is really concerned with building. It's building up and it's building up. And then you see this sort of like building of whatever it is that you've built um, at the full moon. And then the second half of the cycle is a little more about meaning. So what, why was that built? Like, how did that, you know, how did that play out? And more concerned of, I don't know, maybe I guess a little more the esoteric meaning of it. Um, and then you kind of release, so you're not as concerned with the structure and you kind of release that and then the cycle starts again. Um, so I just wanted to add that because I, I found that helpful in my own understanding, so. Yeah, the lunar cycles are really fascinating because they really are, I mean, it's just the cycle of life. Yeah. You know, if you think of it, um, from the perspective of the, the plant cycles, the cycle of growth of a plant, it's mm -hmm. you know, the new moon is when you plant the seed, the full moon is the full, yeah, it grows, it grows, it grows to the full illumination of whatever that seed was you planted and then it starts dying down from there and, um, and wilts and goes back into the ground to provide the um the soil for the next cycle so yeah i mean everything in the world goes through the same cycle that we're looking at through the perspective of the lunar cycles yeah and it, it, i find it extra fascinating too is it's not a circle um it's it each cycle is a new cycle so i mean and in astrology we we have a new sign and a new you know new set of descriptors for each cycle and then even from year to year like this year's full moon um, in Libra is different than last year's full moon in Libra because there's different planets doing different things. So every single, it really reflects that every moment is unique and different, yet there's cycles. And the, understanding those cycles is a huge part of understanding yourself um, and doing personal growth. So, which is what we're trying to help you do. So, right. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Are we ready to look at the chart then? Yeah. Um, so this full moon, as I get this up here, is... Um, as we've been mentioning, it's in Libra. Um, so here's our cute little full moon <laughs> down yeah. at the bottom of the chart. This is in Eastern time. So um, it's, we just happen to have Leo rising in this Eastern um, time chart. But there's your full moon in Libra. And um, what do you think of when you think of Libra, Lori? What's your, what are your go-to words for Libra? It's such a funny sign to me. I, I think it's, uh, it's a sign that people misunderstand a lot mm. um, because the first thing you want to think about is it's a cardinal sign, which means it's very dynamic and it's got kind of startup energy to it. And it's an air sign. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what I, I think people miss because people tend to think of Libra, they think of balance and harmony, they think of romance and relationship. And mm. that all makes you think that it's somehow emotional and coming from the heart, but it's not. This is an air sign. It's coming from the intellect. It's coming from a, an intellectual understanding of how to create harmony and balance and diplomacy. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's a really important distinction to make. Uh, Libra wants to please and gain appreciation and yeah, balance and create harmony. Yeah. What do you think about Libra? Yeah, um, well, it, I think it's, um, when you talk about the intellectual part, I think about like the artistic mind, like this idea of art and things being kind of balanced and as you said, harmonious, but in that, in that very intellectual realm. I mean, it is a Venus ruled sign. So you are thinking about, you know, beauty and harmony, those things, um, it, it definitely brings that in. But I also agree with you. I think that Libra is kind of underestimated like oh Libra but like Libra can be really intense because the other thing is if they're you know Libra wants to kind of I think it's sort of argumentative and it likes to play the devil's advocate and like provoke argument for the sense for the in the name of bringing balance like let's poke it and hear both sides and like let's be in the middle and be the fulcrum so I think it actually can be a um can be super intense uh and uh I come from a very Libra family, so I can definitely speak, speak from experience. Um, what, so, One of the things I think of with Libra, I, I was just saying this to someone the other day, I think of Libra as, you know, if you just think of Libra as a character walking into a room and there's a big argument going on, it's like, oh, Libra's very happy. They've got a job to do. Like, let's, let's um, balance things, get everybody harmoniously connected, be the diplomat. So you, the Libra comes into the room, settles things down, and then leaves the room. They come <laughs> back in an hour later, and people are still all harmonious and calm. They, now they don't have a job to do, so they've got to throw a little bomb into the mix so that they then have a job to do again. <laughs> yeah, Libra's a funny sign. It, it really yeah. is. A, it's an interesting yeah. sign. So it is associated with relationships, but as you say, it's not the relationships at the heart, it's the talking relationships, it's very much anchored in the mind. Um, and so there's some space between the emotional aspect, which is part of why it's good at what it does, is it doesn't get involved in the emotional component. It just keeps it up there in the, you know, above from the neck up. Yeah, um, that's why diplomacy yeah. is so crucial to Libra. Yeah. I think one, and then one of the gifts of Libra really is this lesson around interdependence, that we're all connected one way or another, um, and you don't want to lean into where you get into codependence, where people are taking too much responsibility for others and that kind of thing, but you also don't want to be in isolation. So Libra is trying to find that middle ground of where we can be in connection, but you're also recognizing that anything you do has an impact on everything around you as well. Um, not just people, but animals and whole ecosystem. So that's the kind of the higher lesson, I think, of Libra is that interdependence yeah. piece. And, and we as humans, we don't really get it. <laughs> We're trying, but we don't get it yet. So, um, uh, yeah. Um, I guess the next thing to do is kind of bring in the polarity. So we're at a full moon. So we're talking about that natural paradox, that natural human condition of push pull of you know, being pulled in two directions at once. Um, So all those things we just talked about, Libra is very opposite of Aries, which is the me, me, me sign. This is, no, I gotta take care of me first, so. Aries is about me, mine, and Libra is about us, ours. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's very, the, the polarities in astrology are always so important to look at. In order to really understand one side of a polarity, you kind of have to understand the other it's like two sides of the same coin um aries is you know the the screaming infant that just wants what it wants and um it's again it's a cardinal sign as well so it's very dynamic and very strong and very active both of Mm -hmm. these two signs are Um, but aries is very concerned with the self with being very assertive to get what it wants Libra is, you know, always trying to please. 
Aries doesn't care about pleasing. It just wants what it wants. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's an interesting uh, polarity there between those two. Yeah, and I think it speaks very much to that if you want to have better relationships with other people, you've got to understand yourself. So you have to go into that me and I space in order to understand more about how you're interacting in order to understand your relationships better. And then kind of the reverse of that is that a lot of times relationships mirror us. So when you're having a frustration or whatever, the same old thing with the same old person, they're just mirroring what's inside you. And it's a very difficult thing to grasp, but it, it, it is the truth of the whole know thyself kind of adage that's tied in with some of the spiritual practices. And that, and it really is what we're looking at with the Aries Libra. So for this full moon then, it, if we think about um, the full moon, the illumination, what is being illuminated is the necessity to understand the self in order to um, please others and be diplomatic without losing the self. So there's something oh, yeah. about boundaries in this. There's something about um, the importance of developing personal boundaries here. Oh, that's good, Lori. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally, I get that. Yep. It's saying what needs to be said in a way that is also diplomatically making space for the other person. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. something important in that. Yeah, and there's, there's more about this chart that we can, we'll add to that. But I think before we jump into that, I think um, the next thing is really to just think about where is Libra in your chart? Like think about where this is landing, this full moon, what is being illuminated in your life right now? Um, and start with that. And then if you want to follow the route down to Aries and find the two houses in your astrology chart that work this great um definitely look at where that full moon is is hitting yeah. yeah so find libra in your own chart you know just look for the sign libra on the cusp of a house and the sign will show up if you're going counterclockwise the sign will show up right before the house that it's in so you want to look at that house in your own chart and the house opposite and think about what what is what those two areas, what the pull is between those two, what the boundaries are between yourself and others um, that is being illuminated, that is being shown to you at this time. But where does it fall in your chart, Jimmy? Um, so the full moon is falling in my fourth chart, my fourth house of family. Um, and the, you know, so that means Aries is up there in the 10th. So this is that dynamic tension between family life and work life. Um, and I, I think, um, I was thinking at the new moon, um, I, my seed I planted was I started doing a meditation program, um, to kind of work through some stuff that are affecting my professional life. And so now two weeks later, I'm seeing the, the culmination of that work, like where I have done the work and now I feel more anchored down in that fourth house, um, and more able to continue along the professional relationship that I was working with and feel like, okay, we can keep going. Um, so that's my version of the two week cycle. Um, and uh, I guess the other thing I'll say is just, you know, that my parents are here and um, they're looking for a house. So maybe this is the beginnings of that kind of shift. But um, what about you, Lori? Well, it's kind of interesting. I haven't really thought about it until just now, but um, the, the new moon happened in my seventh house relationship. And now this, uh, this full moon is between my, my second, the moon is in my second and the sun in my eighth. So it's very much about boundaries and relationships and figuring out my, yeah, figuring out that whole, that whole piece of what's mine, what's the other person's mm -hmm. and what needs to be said, what needs to be brought for mm. it's kind of an interesting thing to think about for sure yeah and like what what resources you have to offer the relationship with that full moon in the second house right so right. yeah and what resources i expect from you know what my <laughs> expectations are of the values and resources of the other person and what are mine 
it's definitely um, definitely a conversation. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So yeah, yeah. Look, look at that for everybody listening. Look at that in your own chart. Kind of get a feel for that. The um, new moon that preceded this full moon was in Pisces. Mm -hmm. So you want to go to the house of Pisces for where you planted the initial seed um, two weeks ago. Yeah. So yeah, it's for, it's a cool exercise to do and just like try to identify the fact that and, and honor the fact that we all just work with these opposites and you're just trying to work with, okay, how, where am I in relationship to everything else? So. And, and another, see, thing, yeah. another thing I want to say um, for anybody that's listening to this, if you're not part of Astro Lore's Patreon page, you might want to hop on there because I have started, I just started last month with the last uh, new moon actually posting a worksheet for kind of tracking each full moon, uh, each lunar cycle through your own chart. So that's that can awesome. be really helpful in, in tracking that. Oh, that's great, Lori. So yes, yeah, so, go to Patreon and track down Astro yeah. Lore. And we'll put it in the notes also. And so if you start doing that kind of thing, you'll be able to track your own patterns and understanding your own patterns, quite honestly, is a key to kind of liberating yourself from Absolutely. you know old stuff or you know so on and so forth so I, that's great all cool. right so let's look at some of the aspects to this some of what's impacting this yeah. particular so site. this is quite i'll just i just will start by saying like this is this is a pretty intense chart um and also this this full moon is dramatically different from the new moon we had two weeks ago i mean two weeks ago we were in pisces la la land like dreamy and Ooh, kind of floating along and this is <laughs> this is completely different this has got sharp edges and the cardinal fire you know it's got so sharp edges and it's got flow i mean it's got this one has everything mm -hmm. you know it really yeah. does it's got so much dynamic stuff so first of all what do we want to look at first jenny well i think you can't really avoid that stellium up there at the top or it's not a stellium but the trio of uh sun venus and chiron together um just because we're talking about sun and moon so that's a lot of heat like venus in aries not a sign venus necessarily desires to be in right away <laughs> it's the opposite it's hot and immediate um so it's not very I don't think it's very happy in, in that sense. And then Chiron is in the middle. So we're talking about a wound. Yeah. You know, it's in Aries. A wound to the values and a, a, a very sharp, fast, hard, aggressive wound. And they are all at eight degrees. I mean, this is like exact eight degrees sun, eight mm -hmm. degrees Chiron, eight degrees um, Venus. That's a a hard little knot there. Uh, yeah. 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 And the moon down here trying to trying to make peace, trying to make sense of it. Yeah. Trying to make sense of it, I think is trying better. To make sense of it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I, I think that's that's a tough one. Okay. And then the other thing that's going on, it's really interesting, yeah. is this trying to Saturn, yeah. trying to Mars, yep. grand trying. Trying each other, yeah. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's a kite. <laughs> it's a kite pattern. How do you think of a kite? Well, I think the first thing to think of with a kite is take on board the grand trine. And the grand trine is a steady, flow of energy of around this triangle from the moon to you know mars to yeah. saturn to moon, you know so it's this steady pattern it's in air so we're yeah. thinking about um ideas and communication talk 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 you know just kind of going around and around perhaps um and then after you've done that i to me the next step is to grasp the opposition because the opposition is a more dynamic energy. So we have our full moon as the opposition, but you're adding Venus and Chiron in there. Um, that presents a more dynamic release of that triangular energy. Right. right. Um, and then the other two are just showing you the sextiles that although you have the one 
tough opposition, you have flow in the other parts as well. So it's like all this yeah. anger up here and we're trying to make sense of it intellectually. Right. We're That's trying a great to, way to put it. keep in this, in this intellectual flow when there's this aggressive, angry wound going on. You know, yeah. And we talked about it a little bit before we started the recording. What are we looking at here? All I can think of when I'm looking at this chart, all I can think about is these uh, two mass shootings we've had in the past week. Yeah. Yeah. And what are we going to friggin' do about it besides fritter around in this conversation? Yeah. And try to, you know, try to manage it on this level, but some, something has to, you know, the, the illumination is, oh my God, look where we are still 21 years later. Yeah. And you made me think too, one of the great things about astrology, one of the blessings about it is it gives you perspective. And what you made me think of is like, those of you who live in the United States of America and are looking at this chart, like, you know, this is a very familiar storyline to us, but to the rest of the world, this is crazy. This is just crazy that this is that this is still going on. Like what you said, like 21 years later. So I, I think having perspective is really important. Um, and just seeing, you know, uh, anyway, that's what made, it made me think of. Um, yeah. I, and, and then um, the thing that we were talking about also is the fact that Pluto uh, in the middle of this chart, if you look here at Pluto, Pluto is making no aspects to anything. And actually, Jenny, we didn't even notice this when we were looking at it earlier. Jupiter doesn't make any aspects to anything either. Oh, yeah. I don't know exactly how that might play in, but my hmm. thought when we noticed that the Pluto was not making any any uh any aspects was that something i was listening to on the radio today about um uh, biden possibly taking some executive action around the gun um gun legislation or whatever mm, um, that you know he's talking about executive action and that that pluto not making any aspects is power um going off on its own you know, not waiting for others to join. Well, that when you that makes me feel a little bit like when you mentioned the Jupiter in there too. Like, I, I feel like Jupiter could be interpreted a little bit as like the sense of optimism that it's going to break away from what because it's in Aquarius from that um, from doing the same old same old. But then on the other hand, it's like it's also could be. Um, it also kind of can run away with the chart and Judo, Ju Jupiter can be overly optimistic too. So interesting. Yeah. What do you think of that Jupiter? I don't know. I hadn't thought about that at all. It's like yeah. the, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. That's not yeah. coming to me immediately, but I, I like, I, I really do think the Pluto is, power taking over yeah um so jupiter hmm. let me think more about that because i i also my eye was also drawn to in this chart which is the chart of washington dc because yeah. it's the east coast chart you have uranus right on the midheaven right you know and uranus is like we're gonna change it's got to be different we're gonna break tradition expect the unexpected so huh. actually yeah. that kind of that that's interesting that honest on the midheaven and expect the unexpected. And at this point, I don't think anybody expects our government to be able to do anything about this because nobody's done anything for 20 plus years. Yeah. You know, and people are just getting killed left and right. Just going to the store. I know. Yeah. It's like it's you totally can't go to the insane. grocery store and be safe. You can't go to your job and be stay safe. Uh, it's, it's really, it's a pretty bad situation. Um, so yeah. expect the unexpected. I kind of like that. Yeah. Going off on its own, I kind of like that. Maybe something will actually happen. 
Yeah. Maybe that's the optimism of the Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can so the, the final bit that I think we haven't mentioned is just the piece about communication, which is, is kind of two parts. You've got Mars conjunct the North Node in Gemini. So, you know, there's this very firm insistence on taking action that ties in with communication, the, dia the dialogue. It's like dialogue and action. Um, and then um, because the North Node is in Gemini, it brings you over to Mercury, which oh, moves yeah. Gemini. And Mercury's right up against Neptune, which again brings in that idealism, that softer view, that broader, you know, more inclusive mindset. Um, yet there's a, so I think on the positive note, it's like, hey, we've got to, we really need to take action and we need to talk and we need to talk that's inclusive that includes, you know, more than just me, 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 that includes everybody when you bring Neptune into that mix. So, um, but it's not clear. It's Neptune also brings in a little bit of the fog, right. right? Right. Neptune brings in the fog, and we're a little delusional about what we're thinking <laughs> as well. So, yeah. You know, this this chart to me just brings up more questions than answers, certainly. But it gives yeah. a lot to think about, and and I think that's um, yeah, that's really interesting. And and we've kind of gone off from a personal <laughs> into a, a more uh, bigger picture collective thing and we're certainly not intending to bring politics in but you can't talk about anything without talking about politics at this point yeah and we're just sort of you know u.s centric just because that's where we're located and uh, it's not to neglect the rest of the world it's just kind of what what is popping up so anyway interesting one thing that, that could be an interesting um contemplation and i know i'm going to go back and and think about it afterwards and some of you listening might want to as well, is at that new moon, that Libra new moon six months ago, what was going on around the, the gun stuff at that time? Yeah. Was there some conversation at that time? I, I suspect there might have been. I, I definitely want to look into that. Yeah, because so. that chart was has a some similar symbolism, but shown in a different way. Yeah. Um, so it, it, I'm definitely thinking about this Libra full moon as the culmination of the Libra new moon back in October. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, astrology is always interesting, isn't it, Lori? <laughs> well, we could carry on yeah. all day, couldn't we? Okay. Um, I think that's all we needed to say about this for now. And we will be back around for the uh, next new moon. That's right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.